Yum, yum. Greg here from Pixel Fondue. So in Moto 16.1, there's a number of small fixes. And what I did during the beta is I put together a spreadsheet with some requests and shared it with a small number of beta testers. And we just sort of upvoted the ones that we wanted uh, to be fixed the most. And then Ben Holling, one of the developers over at uh, Foundry, uh, did a great job in some of addressing these. So hopefully this is something that can be expanded uh, out to the Moto community at large, where we can perhaps upvote on some small fixes. And again, these are quality of life things. They're not like, I want a fluid simulator. It's just, you know, like hit enter to rename something. So um anyway so i'm just going to go through them here and there's there's a number and I'll, I'll probably skip some but just so you know that there's still you know quality of life fixes that are being paid attention to uh so just like a small thing say i've got a a cube here right let me hide my mechanical guy and if i want to duplicate the cube if i'm hovering over the item list if i press Control d it duplicates the cube right but it used to be if i was in component mode and control D in component mode is typically to reset the tool pipe back to default settings. And it didn't really matter if you're hovering over the item list. Now it's paying attention. Moto always knows where your cursor is, which pane it's under, and can execute keyboard shortcuts for each of those panes. So we're just being a little smarter about this. Now, if I'm in component mode, like polygon mode, I can still press control D while hovering over the list. Also, and this is fantastic, I could just press enter and rename this to blah and hit enter and I'm done. So I can rename things with just an enter key. Uh, Shader Tree has a few things as well. First of all, I can also rename things by just hitting Enter on it. Let me just hide these guys and get my spider bot back here. Um, so if I have my Black 2, I can hit Enter and call it Black 3. All right. Yes, I want to propagate that to the name of the actual P tag. And again, it's just easier than right clicking. It's easier than popping up mini props or whatever. Um, I can also press F to focus. So if I'm down here and I don't see the material that I'm working on, I just press F and it brings it into line. Kind of like the item list can do this as well. In fact, if I sort of squish this down, let me select my blah here and squish it down. If I hit F, it'll move it into sight. Now it does that in the shader tree too. So that's nice. It's consistent. It's a quality of life enhancement. And it's a type of small fix that we're talking about in terms of um, fixing this, fixing this uh, program. So also if I want to take like an HDRI out of my uh, uh, presets here, so I'll just go to images and I've got an HDR, HDRI folder around here somewhere, right here. And let's go here and you know pick one of these uh, desert images. If I drag this into my uh, shader tree here, it's automatically gonna make that um, spherical and Y. And so same thing if I go over here, this guy right here, I'm just gonna right click and hit load and that'll be in my images list. And so instead of dragging it from my preset library, I'm gonna drag it from my um, images pane and drag it in here. That's also going to automatically put it at uh, the texture locator at spherical on Y. So no more putting on UV automatically, it's smart enough to know you're dragging it to the environment and it'll do that for you there. So that's cool. Another nice quality of life feature is if I pop open my mesh operations stack here, I can just hit tab to bring up my uh, list of mesh operations, just like Houdini, just like Nuke, sort of industry standard. And that's, you just start typing, hit tab, start typing, we'll get a polygon bevel here, make sure uh, group polygons is off, turn on channel hall and just sort of start beveling it out. Now, another nicety is when I hit tab to bring it up, uh, bring another mesh operation in, I don't have my previous search in there. So in prior versions of Moto, it would just keep your previous search in the search bar. So I typed in Polygon Bevel last time. If I hit tab and bring up this uh, uh, preset browser again, it would just, that search would still be there, which is so infuriating because you'd always have to delete it and start typing again. Here you just hit tab, bring it up and start typing. So I could just say like edge bevel, right? Um, and do my edge beveling just like that. What's cool is I can also control D duplicate these now and the mesh operation will be put above the previous mesh operation. Again, infuriatingly in Moto, if you duplicated a mesh operation in the mesh operation list, it would put it underneath the old mesh operation as if you meant to you know, add that in the stack prior to the previous operation, which nobody wants to do. If you add a bevel and then you want to duplicate it, you just want to add another bevel on top of that. You don't want to add one prior to the one you just did. Um, that really doesn't make any sense. So that's fixed, which is nice. Also, if I want to add like a morph map here or UV map, and I'm just gonna pop up my um, mini preset browser here, 
Previously, it wouldn't allow me to do that. It would say that you're a procedural mash and you have to select the base mash. But now, if you want to make a morph and just say morph, it'll automatically select the base mash for me and add that morph map there. You can also put them in over here if you want to, instead of using the little uh, mini props. So that's nice. Furthermore, we still had the control D problem here. It only would do a duplicate if I did control D in um, item mode. So now it's, again, smart enough. If I'm in poly mode here and I'm selecting things or messing around, I can still press Control D while hovering over this uh, field and it will do a um, duplicate that mesh app one more time, right? So again, it's being smart. You know, it's, it's doing the operation that you want it to do, whether or not you're in item mode or component mode. These are types of little fixes that make life easier. Furthermore, if I'm in the schematic view and prefer to work there, I'm just gonna drag my cube in here and double click and get all my nodes out there. If I want to add, say, a triangulate, I can actually just hit tab down here and type triangle. And I can triangulate this mesh from down there. Again, pressing tab and getting the preset browser instead of having to always click the button and then type and then hit return and then do something and then click a button. You just kind of keep your hand on tab and start typing um, right away. It's just, a, it's just a much nicer way to work. I'd like to see that uh, extended over here to the item, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the item list as well, where I hit tab in the item list, and right now it's not doing that. So that's, that's, that's in the queue. It's a small fix. Hopefully we'll get to that, and as Moto continues to um, get you know, fixes over time, like these little fixes will, will make it in. So another thing we can do, and if I just sort of hide some of these guys here and freeze my stack, and go in here and select some polygons. As most of you know, Alt-2 will convert that polygon selection to edges, just like that. And Alt-3 will convert it right back to polygons. Now Control-Alt-2 will convert that to uh, boundary, right? So you don't have to keep coming up here, holding Control and clicking boundary. It's just Control-Alt-2, right? So it makes sense. It's good to add that to muscle memory. There's a couple of other things with mini properties. So let's say I want to bring up mini props on this. It comes up pinned, and if I move it, it remains pinned. So this window remains pinned if I move it so I don't lose it, which is nice. There's also a couple of other things with mini properties. Previously, if I do something like, uh, let's say I'm going to do scale with a uh, like a, rate, a linear fall off. We'll do like a linear fall off. We'll just pop this up, put on Y, and start scaling. Great. Okay. Now, when I drop the tool by pressing Q, that linear fall off is still in the tool pipe. And previously, that would stop me from using mini props because there is no mini props for just linear fall off with no tool active. So if I press space, I wouldn't get anything. You just feel like mini props is broken. Now, if some, there's some remaining items in the tool pipe, like a fall off or something like that, I can still press space and get my um, uh, mini props for my item. Furthermore, with many properties now, it's smart enough to know that when I select multiple things, for instance, I've selected a cube uh, mesh item and a camera, and then press space for many properties, it'll give me the last selected item, when, which in this case is a camera. Previously, it just wouldn't do anything if you had different types of items selected. It's always been able to do the same type of item, like if I have three cubes here, which is kind of cool because I could you know, operate them all at once if I want to. But now it's smart enough to just take the last selected one. Here I've got um, this directional light up here and bring it up there. So that's pretty cool and just more useful. It doesn't feel like Moto's broken. It feels like it's mostly doing what you want it to. There's a couple nice fixes to channel hall as well. So let's say I select this polygon and press up or just activate the move and go up on it. Hit uh, numeric enter. I can now tab between these fields. So I can tab, go to like 0.3, enter and drop the tool, I'm done. Previously, it wouldn't tab between the fields. You'd have to enter and like manually select the next one and then type something in and then click and select the next one. It just was, wasn't finished, right? So this is nice. I'd like to see this um, fix some more. So if I like am scaling or whatever, I would like to be able to do the, you know, control enter, control alt enter, things like that we can, that we can do in the um, uh, properties numeric fields right now for like proportional changes and, and equal changes. It'd be nice to be able to do that in these three little windows down here, but right now I'll just take that we can tab between them, right? Nice, okay. One last nice thing is if I turn on my grid here and turn on lights and cameras and sort of zoom out a little bit, they now have a default size of zero. 
So if I look at the camera and look at the many properties here, the size is zero which means if I move in and out of the scene, the size of the camera sort of scales with the zoom amount. And uh, same with the light. So they're always sort of easy to select, right? And view, and they're not too big when you're in close, and they're not, you know, they're easy to select when you're out far. That's way better than it used to be with one, when they both used to default to one. Um, they're often way too big when you zoomed in and way too small to select when you zoomed out. So that's a nice uh, fix here, the default and size to zero on both of them. Again, quality of life fix, right? So in general, like I said, these are small fixes, but um, they add up over time. And ideally I would love to have a sort of a, a public um, votable, upvotable list, right? So it works like out of Reddit or something where you just upvote on features and they have to be small features, right? If you wanna request to add a feature, it has to be something small. It does have to be curated a bit because when people start asking for, people will ask for anything and, um, this is only going to work if the asks are small and doable and then you know they you know, when certain features get you know requests or small fixes get a bunch of upvotes it becomes obvious that's what people want and you know just being hitting enter and renaming something in the item list right seems like a no-brainer um, but you know it, it it takes something like this to get it on the radar of the devs sometimes so uh, hopefully this is something we can do in the future yum yum